Today, we're going to be talking about webinars and how you can use live streaming to close more webinar sales by hosting better webinars. I've got a 10 part process. I'm going to be sharing with you that process, going through a whole bunch of notes. We have a very exciting show for you today. So I hope you will stick around. It's the business of live video marketing. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show. My name is Owen Video. You can be five. That's right. Type five four, pff, into the comment section now. That is how we say hello on this show. And if you're new here, don't forget to type new in the comment section. N-E-W. That way I can go back into the comments and say hi to you when the show is over. And that's how I like to reach out to all the new audience members watching us on YouTube and well, just YouTube because Facebook and Instagram are down, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you heard the news, but Facebook and Instagram are down right now, which means we're pouring all of our energy into YouTube, the most reliable, scandal-free social media platform on the market today. And we're glad that you would join us. Now, if you're watching this on the replay and you want to skip ahead, you want to just jump right into the content, you can skip ahead to the 10-minute mark. Right now might be the 15-minute mark. We like to go back and forth a little bit. We play with it as it were. Otherwise, stick around because we're going to be giving away some free gear today. And in fact, this month, we are giving away, oh, look at this. I appear on the screen now. We are giving away this Rode Pod My Cardioid microphone, the perfect live streaming microphone. It comes with its own desktop stand that you can virtually attach anywhere. And it even has its own sound filtering mechanism with top ratings on Amazon, normally $100. You can get this mic for free, ladies and gentlemen, for free. All you have to do is go to epiclivevideo.com. That's epiclivevideo.com and start a free account with our good friends over at Restream. That's right. Restream makes all of this possible, all the fun stuff that I'm doing with the camera lenses all over the place. It's all brought to you by Restream. And when you sign up to Restream, you get the world's greatest live streaming software for free. They have free plans. They also have a $15 or $19 plan that will give you so many more features. It all depends on what you want to do with any plan. You can stream on up to 250 different live streaming platforms of your choice. You also get this really cool inside broadcast studio with tons of cool features. You can invite guests. You get these very, very heavy-duty analytics and you can get all of that at the website that's on your screen that my image is blocking right now. Go to epiclivevideo.com. That's epiclivevideo.com. Can we go back to the main camera? All right, folks. We're going to be talking about webinars today. But before we do, I want to jump in and say hello to all of you watching us today on the only working social media platform that uh, there is. Heather Carr is saying, love the title of this live. Hey, where did you come from, Heather? Did you come from my channel or did you come from uh, the Restream channel? Because we had two different titles and I'd love to know which one uh, you liked more. Whoa, Mikey SC is uh, logging in. We've got Cloud uh, Christian Ministry saying, I'm already in Restream. It's awesome. Can I still win the prize? You absolutely can. All you have to do is upgrade your order. Just if you're on the $15 plan, get the higher number plan. You'll be entered into the drawing for multiple sort of entries and you'll have a higher chance of winning. So you're welcome to do that or sit this one out. Either one is fine with me. My C Prince is logging in. Good to have you here. I don't have a TV, but apparently the TV in the UK stopped working a few days ago. I saw, I saw that episode of Mr. Bean, my C Prince. And it was a good one. It was a good one. Heather saw uh, Heather Carr is saying, I'm subbed to your YouTube channel. I'm so glad you liked it, uh, Heather, because I went to Vid Summit this week. And uh, if you guys don't know what Vid Summit is, it is like the greatest, the 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 ultimate sort of um, uh, YouTube conference for for those of us that are interested 
in producing videos and live streaming on YouTube specifically. But I went to this Vid Summit event where I'm the, the main room MC, and I just got so re-energized that YouTube is all about people and human connections. And it's about showing emotion and it's about being emotional and doing all those wonderful things. So I try, I'm trying to be more like inflammatory. I'm trying to be more like human in my titles. And that was what I was doing there today. So thank you, Heather, for logging in. Thank you, Chris Durbovin, logging in from Belgium. So glad to have you here. We have a great topic today. Um, and I really hope that we can dig into it today. LLN Carolinas is saying my first conference will be People of Video, which is actually uh, this week. I will be flying out on Thursday night. So LLN, make sure you come over and say hi to me. I'm only going to be there very briefly. I'm just going to be there kind of briefly. I have to come in, speak, and then go because we have another conference next week. But I would love to meet you. We've got the handyman toolbox saying, oh, and it's Rick. What's up, Rick? Fwop. I'm joining today because Facebook sucks. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Facebook is down. Facebook and Instagram are down. I will be on the news tonight in San Diego talking about it. The reasons that they're down, I don't feel comfortable discussing on this show. It is deeply, deeply nefarious and troubling. But here's the thing about that is that YouTube is up and running. And I think that it's like this really great opportunity for us as all of us are our YouTube centric people to really emphasize the value and the reliability and the credibility of, of YouTube and moving our content over to YouTube in uh, a big way. Carmel King 200,000 is saying no one talks about the learning curve of um, internet marketing. The learning curve is um, a cost. I agree with you. Uh, 100%, you know, and I think that you have to look at it like a learning curve and like a cost. Now, all that to say, my goal has always been to produce trainings. And if you guys are watching on my channel, thank you so much. If you're watching on the Restream channel, then please subscribe to my channel as well, owenvideo.com slash YouTube. Go to owenvideo.com slash YouTube or simply search for Owen Video on the YouTube platform. I teach video marketing. So video as a way of moving your business forward, moving your influence forward. And even if you're a creator and you want to be making more money with your YouTube channel, then that's what I'd like to be. That's what I would encourage you to uh, scroll over to my, to my channel. And today's topic is no different. Today, we're going to be talking about webinars. My goal is that you would help get you through the learning curve a little bit faster and with fewer bruises. And so we're gonna be talking uh, today about webinars and specifically, we're gonna talk a little bit about, oops, I gotta go make sure I'm on the right page here. We're gonna talk about webinars and we're gonna talk about specifically how webinars have a massive place in your business, okay? Whether you're a YouTuber, or whether you're a business creator, you have a business, you have a coaching company, and you want to start using webinars, the biggest mistake that I see with webinars is that you actually don't take them seriously enough. You know, you actually don't take them seriously enough. So I want you guys to think about any questions, comments you might have about running webinars. And if you've never, Cloud Christian Ministries, thank you so much, if you've never done a webinar before, then stick around. This could be a really, uh, really interesting a really interesting episode for you because I want to dig into, hey, Consistent Ash, it's good to have you here. She says, I love uh, the title of the show, The Outage. It's an interesting thing. Is it an outage um, or is it a scrambling to hide information? Let's let's find out. If you guys want to tune into the San Diego News tonight, KUSI in San Diego, I will be on the television discussing the details of this um, well-timed power outage. In the meantime, uh, we're, I'm going to tickle your fancy by talking about webinars. Okay. We're at the 10 minute mark. So let's go ahead and, uh, get started. I will open up the slide and here we go in five, four, three. Today, we're going to be talking about webinars and how you can live stream your webinars on YouTube 
Facebook and the other platforms to close more sales and bring more attention to your business. And make no mistake, closing more webinar sales is always the goal. And I know that for some of you that might rub you a little bit the wrong way because you're thinking I'm a creator, I'm a YouTube creator. Well, I wanna show you how to use webinars to grow your audience and grow your influence. Now, for those of you that are business coaches, you have a product to sell, you have a service to sell. This is really designed for you because you're like me and I'm a YouTube coach. So I want to do webinars that bring more people into my coaching programs. I'm gonna be showing you today my you know, 10 part system, and, and I'm gonna be pulling it up on the, the, the back screen there right now, but I really wanna emphasize that there's more, there's really more than 10 steps here. You know, what I'm giving you is I think the foundation where if you were to take these 10 steps and lock yourself in a room for a couple hours, I think that you'd have a pretty outstanding webinar on the other side. There are always things you're going to learn along the way but a lot of those things would be over teaching, I think. I think I'd just be over teaching you, you know? So I really wanna give you the big takeaways that I think will put you in a place to run a great webinar today. And then we'll open it up to uh, ask your questions. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do today. And I wanna get started by sharing my screen. Let's see if I can do this properly. Where did it go? Here we go. Uh, we're going to talk to you guys today about how to do a live stream webinar, and we're just going to roll through some of these things with you. So let's start with tip number one. Okay, tip number one is strategy, all right, and the strategy of a webinar. What I want to encourage you to do is live stream into a Facebook group, okay? I want you to hear me on this. Do not multicast your webinars, all right? Now, here's Here's sort of the thinking with all that, okay? And notice how I'm like trying to, I'm trying to twist my body over to hit my, my thing. I'm doing kind of a different setup today with the Zoom call. Um, what that means is that with, with Restream and with some of the other platforms that you might be using, we're used to multicasting and giving our message to everybody all at the same time. I want you to move away from that with the webinar and realize that your webinar is a place where you only want your most dedicated people, okay? You, you want the people that want to connect with you and to go that distance with you. So what you're going to do is you're going to restream and you're going to use multicasting to go live as you normally would go live. And if you're not going live on your YouTube channel, Heather Carr, are you going live on your YouTube channel? I'd love to know. Consistent Ash, I think you're going live because you're using a software I don't want to talk about. But are you going live on your YouTube channel? You absolutely should be. And I just got back from Vid Summit where going live was a huge component of the YouTube platform. So I want you to go live and multicast on YouTube, Twitter, and all the places when you're promoting the webinar. But when it comes down to actually going live for your webinar, I want you to do that in a Facebook group. Now, there are other ways to do it without getting too technical. Like you could like have a private page and a ClickFunnels site and then embed the YouTube live my point is I want there to be like one link and I want all of your people to come into this one place. Now, here's the reason I like Facebook groups is because all of us know how to use Facebook groups and Facebook groups are still the most popular sort of online grouping site. They have all the things that you need. Now, other communities are coming up and we know that and we'll pay attention to those. But right now with the Facebook group analogy, here's what, what's going wrong in Facebook groups. Nobody knows how to run a Facebook group. So the idea is that you have this Facebook group and it's full of people who have either registered for or watched your webinar. Think about the culture that that puts into your group now. So when you, when you do your webinar, I want you to go live into a Facebook group only. And that way you've got this group that's full of people who have either registered for or have seen your webinar. OK, you'll also have a place where the replay lives and, and um, a, a ton of other benefits. The handyman toolbox asking a great question, uh, and you guys are welcome to ask your questions as well. Uh, how about record Zoom and link private Facebook groups? Yes, you could do that. Like if you're going to go live in a Zoom room and then multi-stream that into a Facebook group, you can do that. 
I say cut out the middleman. Go to Epic Live Video, get a get a free version of Restream, and you'll get lower thirds. You'll have chat put up. It's a better way to do a webinar. If I didn't mention it before, I'm really like a I'm not gonna say against, I'm not really way into like dedicated webinar softwares. I feel like they can be a cost that you don't need. So instead, I really want to encourage you to like use Restream for all the things that you do. Okay. So that's that's kind of where I want you to be. Let's see if I can go back. Okay, good. All right. It's all it's all working. So the first part of the strategy is that you're not going to multicast, that you're actually going to go live in a Facebook group. And that way you're creating this group with a culture around uh, around your content and everybody's kind of been through this, okay? So step two. Now, step two is going to challenge all the rules, all right? So step one was like, now you know your strategy. What do you do next? Like, do you make the PowerPoint next? Do you build the landing pages? What do you do next? None of that, okay? The next thing you do is you pick the date. Okay, you go into your calendar, you look at your calendar and you say, when are we going to do this webinar? And the reason that you do this, there we go. The reason that you do this is you want to give yourself a timeline. Okay, because if you go the route of, I'm not going to make my, I'm going to make my slides and then pick a date, you'll never have a date because your slides will never be done. If you go to the place where you're like, I'll, I'll make it when I have my landing pages done or whatever, like, again, you, you won't ever get that done. It, it's you're, you're, you're uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul, you know, and you're misprioritizing your time. But when you say I'm doing this webinar in 30 days on Wednesday at 9 a.m., it's in the calendar. OK, what we do, first of all, that motivates us. We have now a timeline to get things done. We have 30 days to get things done. But, but here's the other thing I want to do is I want you to like schedule alerts that count down that day. So if the webinar is in 30 days, then, then you want to have an alert that goes off 10 days before, seven days before, five days before, so that you're constantly getting these reminders that your webinar is coming up. You don't want to wake up on Monday and be like, oh my gosh, I have a webinar on Wednesday. So number one is sort of like creating these, these backup reminder events based on your due date. But the other part of that is having a link that you can send to people now. You can make your Google Calendar link or you can use ad event or Calendly to, to actually make it public and send people a link that they can sign up to. And that way they'll get the same reminder schedule that you're getting. So this is a really, I think, important tip is that you you pick the date first of the webinar to give yourself a timeline and then yeah sb is saying just don't use facebook it's unstable hilarious switch to youtube baby that's where you need to be at and then schedule 30 days recurring this is my big challenge for you guys i i want you to actually schedule two or three webinars at a time because this is where i this is the biggest place i see you guys fail with webinars is you do one and even if it went well, you're like, oh, I got to fix the slides before I do another one. Oh, I got to do X before I do another one. Um, a, B, C, X, Y, Z, right? No, once you do one, you go out, you, you celebrate. I, I made one sale. I made no sales, but got through it. You always celebrate. It's always a win. You dust your shoulder off and then you get ready for the next one. Okay. A webinar should be a recurring event that happens in your business. Schedule it like the third Friday of every month, the third Wednesday of every month, whatever the, even if it's uh, the second Tuesday and the fourth Tuesday, whatever you, you think it is. Okay. For you, when you do them is a question you guys can ask later, but I won't take your time with answering questions. Nobody is asking me. So Demi Hart is saying, just to make sure the Facebook group is a group I'm creating not a random group within my niche. Yes, you're absolutely right. You're going to create a group. Now, if you guys already have Facebook groups, you, you could just start doing this with your existing Facebook group. If your group is already 4,000, 5,000, you know, I, I would maybe just start a new Facebook group. And it's okay. We have like three or four Facebook groups. Some are less active than others. But 
you know, you start this group and it's all about you, people that have been through a webinar with you and you will continue to update this group. I mean, this is a new thing. Like you'll, you'll post once in a week in there or whatever the case might be, but it's always going to be around the conversation of your webinar. And we could talk about how to manage that group in a, uh, in another, in another episode, but yes, absolutely. You're going to want to create a new, uh, a new Facebook group for that. So what we're talking about is how to do a live stream webinar. You, you want to first live stream into a private group and then pick the date of your webinar and schedule two or three webinars in advance. Okay. So that as soon as you're done with October's webinar, you're working on Sept uh, 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 November's and December's and you're looking 90 days ahead. Brendan Sparks is saying, this is gold. Thank you, Brendan. Good to see you here, by the way. I love to see our YouTube, um, our YouTube friends kind of show up for topics like these because they are important. I just got back from Vid Summit, and every single big name there is a. It was a business conference. It was, and and the product we all sold is video. I want you guys to think about that. You know, we pr video is part of our marketing, it's part of our fulfillment, it's part of our product. But you got to have some business skills. You got to have some internet marketing skills. Okay. Now, what do you do next? Okay. <clears throat> you got to build your deck is the next thing that you're going to do. Now, in my private training group, guys, we, we have so much training on how to build um, an amazing slide deck. And I wish I could take time with you today on, on how to build it, but it really it would just take us too long. But what I do have for you is a slide deck formula that I want to share with you. And this slide deck formula should really help you understand how to build your PowerPoint slide deck. Because I'm sure many of you already have a slide deck, a PowerPoint, a keynote with your main presentation. And if you don't, great. I'm going to get you started on the right path. But if you do, you're going to probably want to make some additions to it, dial it in uh, to make it sort of like the way you want it to be. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Let's talk about how to structure your slide deck. And by the way, if you guys are enjoying this content, do me a favor, hit that share button right now. Hit the share button on YouTube and, and maybe copy the link and send it to somebody or share it on Twitter. I'd really appreciate that. We certainly want to bring more friends in. So let's talk about how to structure your slide deck. Well, the first tip is you need to have a really powerful opening slide. And I think I'm going to cover this later. I don't remember. You need to have a really powerful opening slide that everyone's going to look at. Okay. Because I think the big mistake that, that a lot of folks make is that you sort of like don't have anything for the audience to look at. Remember, you want your audience to have this great slide to look at, and you want to go back and forth between the slide and your camera, the slide and your camera. And this makes your event real high energy. So spend some time on that opening slide. I think that a great way to go is have a really powerful image with the title of your webinar on it or the value that they're going to get. Another way to do it is a great picture of you with the title of your webinar, maybe even like your QR code for your Instagram or, or your link tree or, or, or something like that. Okay. But you have something that people can engage with. And so you're, you're saying like, Hey, welcome to the webinar. So glad to have you guys here. Hey, you know, if you haven't already get your phone out and scan the QR code that you see on your screen right now, go and scan it. We're going to get started in just a minute. Follow me on Instagram and da, 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 da. And the reason that you're doing this is to create excitement for the upcoming webinar. So I don't mean a cover slide. I don't mean a slide that's like, you know, welcome to the webinar. I mean like a high energy slide. Okay, that's number one. Okay, number two is you need to have some story slides. Okay, now you can have three or four story slides. I, I actually have like maybe 10 of them, but I hide them. You know how you can do a hidden slide in PowerPoint? I hide the slides depending on what webinar I'm doing. So if I'm doing a webinar that's for social media managers, I kind of only show the story slides that are inter that might interest a social media manager. I might like leave out some of the YouTube influencer stuff. You know, I, I try to focus more on what's going to interest the viewer. Uh, I know that I have some slides that really graphically show my cancer 
I, cause I, you know, we, I had a surgery, take my tumor out. And so I show that tumor picture when I, for certain presentations, I might hide that. Okay. Because it might just be too aggressive. I just think about it first. My point is you want to have a couple story slides that show who you are and what you do, right? Like, Hey, here's me. Here's my kids. Here's me like playing softball. I'm a big, I'm a big baseball, baseball nut, you know, here's me at the gun range, right? Here's me riding horses, whatever the case might be. You want to have programmed into your webinar sort of a why this is important to me story or, or why I'm the best to teach this kind of story, right? So I sort of tell my story of how I began knocking on doors in San Diego and I show some of my earliest work and my, my radical, um, 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 uh, I'm looking at your comments, they're so funny, um, sort of my radical hairdos and whatnot, okay? But you want to have a couple story slides in there. Okay, next is you want to have a very clear slide that pivots to your presentation. Now, I actually have a few of these in my slide deck. And again, I would love to share that slide deck with you. That's content that we save for our private training group. And that's something that's available to you. Go to the videomarketingschool.com, click on work with us if you'd like to learn about my advanced training. But your pivot to presentation slide, think of it like a, like a, like a knuckle or like an elbow, right? It connects the arm and the, fore, and, the, and the bicep. This is where you pivot into, okay, today we're gonna be talking about, so you're gonna tell your story like, hey, it started for me, it started for me here and, and then it went to here. Um, and then today, so you say, I started as a poor, you know, videographer in San Diego, and then I became this big YouTube star. And so today we're going to talk about, you know, how you can grow your business using YouTube and live video. So you want to have this presentation, this pivot slide. That's just like today we're going to talk about X and it should be very, very value, you know, value driven. All right. So handyman toolbox is saying, what about opening the webinar live as an MC? and then playing a pre-recorded webinar. Absolutely, I believe in that. And I believe that this can work with that model. In fact, um, I made $15,000 on a webinar where we did exactly that. And it wasn't because we planned on it, it was because tech problems forced us into doing it. Luckily, luckily I prepared. I had a recording of the webinar from the night before. I practiced it, I recorded it. But yeah, what we did is we, we recorded it and then my intro is big, it's like, Hey, everybody, glad you're here. Hey, everybody, glad you're here. Real high energy opening live. That's why you need to have that powerful opening slide. And then you can say, well, we're going to jump right into the webinar. Let's get started. And then you play the video and boom. And you can do that all inside of your Restream account if you already have Restream. Just go into the graphics section on the right-hand side and upload the pre-recorded video. You can also share your screen. There's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, Pam, great to see you. Pam's logging in. Okay, so what do we do after that? Then you want to add your teaching slides. Now, I'm not here to tell you how to do your teaching slides. My guess is many of you already have PowerPoints. How many of you already have PowerPoints? Tell me in the comments section. Say, yes, I do. No, I don't. You have a PowerPoint. You have a keynote. You have some type of PDF collection where you can go through these slides with people. Because it, you just use your teaching slides. This is what I believe about most of you is that you already have a good webinar. You just don't have a lot of structure. You don't have a system behind it. And so that's what I, I want you to get out of today. You're going to just, you just add the opening slide, the story slide, the pivot slide to your teaching slides. Okay. Now, what do you need in your teaching slides? You just teach what you're going to teach. Yeah. I, I think there's like this big secret. You know, you just teach what you're going to teach. Okay. What's more important is that you show your viewers that you can be trusted to take them to the next level. That's the goal of a webinar. If you over teach, they're gonna say, what's up my man? Clickable custom thumbnails is logging in. Jeremy Vest, guys, be sure to subscribe to his channel and watch him for everything that he does. He's my mentor, good friend, someone you should follow, but your teaching slides are just teaching slides. Just teach what you need to teach. Get them to believe in you. If you over teach, they're going to say, well, I didn't buy. I didn't buy from you because you gave me a really lot of good information on your webinar. And I'm going to 
I'm going to just like, like dig into that for a little bit. You know, you want to be aware of that. So just be careful with over teaching. Okay. And then finally, you want to have your offer slides and your offer slides are going to be like the last five to 10 slides. My offer slides are the, it's the first thing I work on. I make offer slides. Your offer slides are what sells the damn program. So people get into these webinars. I was like, oh, I need to make all my teaching slides. Those can be the crappiest things you've ever seen. But your offer slides need to be legit. All right, so what do offer slides look like? Let's go into that right now. Okay, so an offer slide might look something like this. All right, and I'm actually going to kind of come in here and see if I can edit this as I go. I'm cleaning up myself. Okay, can you guys see that? Yeah, so Cloud Christian uh, Ministries is saying, can you show us an example of your offer slides? Uh, this is an, is an example. Okay, right here. is kind of the basic structure. We're on like, this is the last slide that they see. And, and it's the slide that is going to make you all your money, okay? So at the top, it should say something like, enroll today at thevideomarketingschool.com. All of you need to have a custom, it should, it should not have like a slash something. It should, you should have a custom URL for your order page. It's like enroll today at buyfrombrendan.com. Enroll today at heathercarpromo.com, okay? It's kind of an example. And then these bullet points, like like the... This here, let me just kind of like, like this and that's too thick. This and this, this is just like a bullet point in text. So it's like bullet point and it's like, you get, you know, my recordings, right? And then number two is you get live trainings, right? The like, and you could have, you know, five or 10, the bigger that you make this, the better. And maybe that's somewhere that I could jump in here is, is that the reason that my offer slides are 15, 20, because my offers are so chunky. So when I offer something, it's got like 10 things to it. And so my final slide is like a picture of, of the thing, right? That's what this is. A big old link right here. It says enroll today. And then everything that they get, always, always, always with the final price of 5,000 that gets checked out and then the real price 2,500. And you'll sit here and you'll leave this slide on the screen while you're asking, answering questions and stuff like this, okay? So that's gonna be your final slide. Now, after that, what you're going to do is work backwards, okay? So you're going to talk to people. You say, well, the first thing you're going to get in my training is you're going to get what? Recordings. So you say, the first thing you get is recordings. You know, you get 105 recordings of all the videos I've done over the last 13 years where X, Y, and Z and A, B, C just happened, okay? You're going to have like this bullet point up here and then explain a little bit about what happened. You get thing one. Okay, and then you're going to just kind of do this again for each bullet point. Okay, but like this is thing two, right? You just make one of these bullet point slides for every bullet point that's right here. So if you have one, two, three, four, five bullet points, you're going to have this slide here. And then you're going to have six of these slides here. All right, so hopefully that that makes sense. You guys are seeing like how we do it. All right, let's come back. Let's bring it back on the thing. First of all, how are you guys doing with this content? Are you guys doing good with this? This is ma making sense for you. Okay, tell me, let me let me ask you this. What would you sell on a webinar? I'd really love to hear from you because I know you're mostly YouTubers. What would you sell on a webinar? And if I were you, I, I would like, if you don't have a product, I would sell a, a, a call with you and a, a Patreon membership, $5 a month. Um, Patreon sells 
uh, will takes less Patreon takes less percentage than YouTube does on memberships. Cloud Christian Ministries is selling courses. Awesome. You know, I don't know if you know, I started by making apologetics videos. In fact, that's what this is on my arm. This is a whole message of apologetics. Um, I don't know if that you're into that kind of thing, but you get it, right? Because you're into ministries. So Handyman is selling business group coaching. Great. So you guys have something to sell. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So you're going to build your deck and you're going to follow the slide deck formula that I just showed you uh, right there. What's next? Okay. Now you need to set up your studio. All right. This is sort of a big one because everybody's got different screens nowadays. So I want to go to my, my big screen and sort of show you guys how, how I'm set up here. Um, first of all, I'm not as organized as I normally am. And so let me just kind of show you what I do. First of all, I have vMix out, okay? vMix is what I'm using to switch all the cameras around. And then I have my PowerPoint over here. Okay, so this is normally how I set it up, where I've got the, the vMix here and the PowerPoint here so that I can easily sort of pick which slide I want to go to. And then it will show up on the, on the restream. Oh, excuse me, show up on the, on the vMix over here. My restream is set up on my second screen. So I don't know if you guys can see this, on my second screen over here. So I have two screens, one right here and one right here. And I have my vMix and my PowerPoint on one screen. If you're not using vMix, great. You just need to have your PowerPoint on one screen. And then you have your restream on a separate screen. If you're only using one screen, then ignore this part of the training, okay? Because it's not gonna matter. But what I see is you guys, most of us have two screens or more. I actually have three. I have a third one right here behind me. Uh-oh, where did it go? My Zoom has disappeared. And, and you need to know how it's all set up. And I believe you need to write it down. You need to like have a standard. Here we go. There it is. There it is. You need to have a standard for how you set up your studio. So get your screens and your settings dialed in. You should never go into a live stream webinar. Webinar. Go into a live stream Q&A, dude, with your pants off. And you, you know what I mean. With, how about like with your shirt off? What I meant to say is just carefree. Like just go nuts. Like have fun. Press buttons. But on a webinar, you need to be a little bit more polished. Okay. People have less patience for um screwing around okay tip number five now you're going to promote the webinar now when you promote your webinar you need to have realistic attendance goals and that's what i really want to talk about today uh jerry wald just joined us from let's talk stroke and it's good to have you here let's talk about realistic goals i'm going to talk about what you should measure in your in your webinar in just a second but i want you to talk about a realistic goal five people on your webinar is fine but I think we're so used to these big internet marketer models where it's like, oh, you know, a Amy Porterfield has 115 people on her webinars, maybe 300. Well, that's great, but she doesn't live stream. She has no YouTube channel. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's a different business model. You have probably have more subscribers than she does, more watch time. So it's like, what are you choosing to look at? You might say, I need to have 30 people on my webinar. Man, look, I'm pumped if I can get 30 people on a webinar, me. You know, and I, I got a big email list. You, you know, your goal should be like five people on, on a webinar or 10. And you're gonna get there by getting personal and personally inviting people to attend. So when you promote, you're gonna do what you normally do. You're gonna post on Facebook, you're gonna post on stories, and you're just gonna say, I got a webinar coming up. You're gonna email your list if you have one. Got a webinar coming up. If you don't have a list, don't worry, you're building one. You're going to do these things. And, and then here's what happens. People are going to ask you questions. Oh, it's great. You're doing a webinar. Write them personally. Write them personally and say, hey, I, you know, thanks for asking me those questions. I'm really working really hard on this. I'd really like it to be amazing. Are you going to be there? Are you going to come? You know, get them 
to actually enroll. Like, I think too many of us are focused on sending a link out in this bulk email fashion and then everybody registers or you run Facebook ads in this really big bulk system and then everybody registers. That will happen for you someday. But right now, when somebody expresses interest or asks you a question, you need to dig into the chat with them, slide into their DMs and start talking to them about your webinar. You'll get the best results from one-to-one -one conversations with people. Okay, what's next? Um, you need to set up a five-minute email, okay, along with a robust email nurture campaign. Oops, by the way, um, we're going to do a webinar at owenvideo.com slash webinar. Is that right, uh, Carlos? If you guys want to see our next webinar and you want to see this stuff in action, register for our next webinar. Darn it, I keep pressing the wrong button. Register for our next webinar. And you'll see all this stuff in action. Um, it should be, uh, Carlos is asking me where the link is. I think it's on the ROS for today. So what is a five minute email? If your webinar is at 3 PM, then you need to have a web and like an email go out at 2:55 that says, Hey, we're getting started. Where are you? And it's going to take three or four minutes for that email to even get out to the public. This is separate from whatever Gmail might send your people like, oh, alert reminder, whatever. This is an autoresponder program. Brave Talk Show is here. It's great to see the Brave Talk Show. One of the most exciting talk shows for entrepreneurial women and really entrepreneurial moms. Uh, the Brave Talk Show uh, is doing fantastic work, so be sure to follow them. That five-minute email is designed to get last-minute people onto your webinar. But you should also have, you, you should also have like a really robust follow-up system. So like if somebody registers for your email today, but the webinar is not for next week. So if somebody registers for your webinar today, but the webinar is not for a week, you need to have like two or three emails go out that get them excited and then sort of close up with a five-minute a, a five email. Okay, so think about that. Um, as you're uh, creating your, your content. Okay, the next one I sort of already talked about, you need to open up really strong. Start your webinar 10 minutes early. So if your webinar, uh, look, I am a big, big believer in this. I think that people waste so much time, especially entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurs that live stream to YouTube waste even more time. You know, just look at your watch time. Every time you see a watch time dip, you're wasting time. You're talking about something your audience doesn't care about, okay? Now, we learn about those by going through our watch time, so I'm not trying to blame you or whatever. Just learn from it and move on. But start on time. And the only way to do that is to start 10 minutes early. So you're starting 10 minutes early, and you're like, welcome, everybody. You know, we're gonna get started in just a minute, pumped that you're here, and, and go to that opening slide. You know, be sure to watch me on my opening slide, blah, 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 blah. Go follow me. We're going to start in just a minute. And then you're playing music. See how I got that? I got this music on a one press. Okay. So, you know, you want to open really strong and toggle off and on with your main slide. Uh, do some cool stuff there. Cloud Ministries is asking, what camera switcher are you using? I am using vMix. And um, no, excuse me, I'm using X Keys connected with vMix. X Keys is fantastic. We also recommend Stream Deck. They're both brilliant. Carlos, if you can send a link, please do. Otherwise, just check them out on Amazon. So you really need to open strong with energy to show your audience that you care about this webinar. If you come out of the gates like afraid and sort of like not sure how the audience is gonna take this, well, it's my first webinar, guys. No, you, you need to walk into that room confident. Okay, so open up really strong. Okay, don't forget about people. You've got real people that are watching you. Oops, this is not, it's not, uh, it, it's not uh, you talking at the wall. Don't forget that you have real live people that are watching you. So use the chat, ask questions, treat it like a live stream. You know, use the comments in a webinar. This is what I feel a lot of people don't do on webinars because they pre-record them 
and they want you to think it's live so they can't really answer your questions. It is so powerful to actually do a live webinar live because so many people are pre-recording webinars. And I feel like they could be a very powerful place for you to be, okay? So don't forget that real people are a part of this and use the chat. Here's the other thing, ignore distracting comments. I wanna, I wanna talk about this. You know, dis comments can be so distracting because you'll get some troll that wants to say something negative. And I know as well, I, you know, like how many of you guys have ever had a negative comment before? Okay, scale of one to 10, 10 being like they really, really bug you. How much do bad comments bug you? One to 10, one that you don't care at all. 10, it's like, uh, I would say I'm like a seven. You know, they really, uh, I, was, I was hanging out with Brian G. Johnson, Daniel Batal, some really big YouTubers. And we were sitting around at a table and all of us agreed that negative comments to some way, shape or form, Daniel was a little bit different than me and Brian but you get those comments, just get under your skin. You know, I got one last week and it really bugged me. Chris Bobin saying eight. I got one last week and it really bugged me. But here's the thing. I want to encourage you to ignore distracting comments. Okay. Ignore distracting comments because they don't serve you, you know, and everyone else, you don't need to give attention to them. You know, what I want you to do is be in a place where you don't have to notice them. You don't have to acknowledge them and that you're perfectly content with that, okay? Oh, number nine, excuse non-interested parties. Never pitch to non-buyers, okay? Never pitch to non-buyers. So what does this mean? Okay, when I say excuse non-interested parties, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back to what we talked about before with your with your, with your deck, okay? Let's go back to the slide here. Earlier, we talked about this. We talked about your teaching, okay? And then you've got your offer here, okay? Never pitch to people who don't wanna hear the offer. So excuse people right here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do something like, all right, so, I've just been through the big teaching with you. And, you know, there's probably two groups of people on this webinar right now. There's probably those of you that want to learn more. And, and those of you that got what you got all you need. You've heard enough. You're done. You want to log off. For those of you that are ready to log off and you got what you came for, I want to say thank you. Super kind of you to be here. The webinar is over. And I hope you have a great day. But for those of you who want to learn more, I have put together a program that will take you to the next level. And if you'd like to see it, I'm gonna take five minutes and I'm gonna go through that program and show you what's included. So if you wanna stay, go ahead and click, you know, click stay. I wanna hear from you in the comment section and then sh shut up. After that, don't say anything. Just let people go, yeah, of course, yeah, of course, in the comment section. Heather Carr is saying it's super respectful of people's time. Absolutely it is. And it clears the room of non-believers, right? Now you've only got people that supposedly, you know, want to stay in the program or, or want to at least hear about the program, okay? And that's when you're going to go into, hey, you're going to get thing one. You're going to get thing two, Right? You go into all this and then finally you say, now you can enroll today, you get all the things, right? And that's when it leads right into your uh, slide deck presentation. So you're gonna excuse non-interested parties because we never pitch to, to non-buyers. Never ever pitch anything to non-buyers, okay? It should only be a room of believers and they won't all buy. They're not all gonna buy, but you're hoping that two or three of them will buy. Okay, all right, what's next? Number 10, you gotta close out strong. Ignore the awkwardness. Man, that's a big one because I'll tell you, it is awkward going through your slides knowing that you're trying to sell somebody. And even if you're selling a $5 a month Patreon subscription, right? Hey, you, you know, you get a call with me, 
you get access to this private group or whatever the case might be. You need to treat it like it's a $500, tons of value. And if you do have a $500 offer, you need to spend even more time on your closing slides. Don't be in a hurry to rush through it. Really explain what people are getting. Really explain like you're getting this and you're getting this and you're getting this. You know, so don't, don't get rushed on your closing. You really need to close out strong and practice looking your, your audience in the eye. Like look at your camera in the eye and just know your content knowing that some people are going to log off and they're not going to want to hear all of it and all that other kind of stuff. Okay. And then finally, I've got a bonus tip for you. Track all of your results. Okay. And specifically, we're going to talk about the total amount of people registered and the cost. Okay. So what that means is if you get 10 people registered for your event, how much did it cost you? For many of you, it's going to be nothing. You know, I, I emailed my list. I made a Facebook post. 10 people registered. Great. Cost was zero. Cost was zero. You may want to like say, well, it took me three hours. And I value my time at, you know, 40 bucks an hour, 100 bucks an hour. Most of you are going to say a thousand bucks an hour. That's, that's not true. You know what I mean? You think about what does a professional, what would it pay someone? It, you know, if you, it, it, anyway, it's a whole business lesson there. Because you want to apply a cost to it. For me, we run Facebook ads and we spend about a thousand bucks, maybe 3,000 bucks on Facebook ads. Obviously, the webinars need to make way more than that for them to work. Okay. So you want to measure, measure like how many people registered and the cost. Okay. Then you want to look up your show up ratio and the cost. Okay. So these are kind of like two different things. Your show up ratio is the percentage of people that showed up versus registered. So you got 10 people registered, five showed up. That's a 50%. That's a 50% um, show up rate. If it cost me, let me give you, I'm a, I mean, it's, it's tough with the numbers, but just to trying to like keep it real. Um, if it was 50 bucks to get those, those five people there, 50 divided by five is $10. It costs $10 to get someone to show up. You get it? Now for us, it costs more like 35 bucks to get someone to show up. So we only learn that by doing it. So the whole idea is, okay, if we want, 35 people on a webinar, then it's about 35 bucks to get them there. You know, what's 35 times 35? That's how much we should spend on our ads. Okay. So these, the things that you track really mad, really matter. And then of course, you're going to want to know a purchase ratio and cost. Now, here's the thing. We always make our purchase ratio off the total number of people that saw the, the final slide. So you did that thing where you asked everyone to get off the webinar. You say, hey, look, if you're not interested in this, now's your time to leave. And let's say you've got you know 13 people left on the webinar. But in the time of that pitch, like seven of them logged off. So only seven people saw the closing slide. Out of those seven, right? How many purchased? Okay. Another way to do this, take the total number of purchases. Let's say four people bought. Four people divided by the seven. But you also have total registered versus the seven. So once you have a purchase amount, you have these great ratios that you can start like applying. Say, okay, well, if I get 10 people on, four people buy, right? Or if I can get 20 people registered, it means four people will buy. Next time we're going to get 40 people to register and see if we can get eight people to buy. You see how that works? Okay, so track your results and, and you don't need to track everything. Just kind of track these basic numbers and you will have everything that you need 
to run a successful uh, live stream webinar. Now, here's the deal. If you guys want to get our checklist and you want to like see our webinar system type, it's going to be hard to do on YouTube. Um, email me. Email me info at the video spot.net. Email info at the video spot.next or register for our next webinar. Carlos just put the link in there. Here's what I'm trying to do. I will give you guys like the this checklist, my slides, I'll give you whatever you want, but I want you to be on my email list. That's that's the whole exchange. And I want it's kind of tough on YouTube. It's like, how's the best way to access all that? So register for the next webinar. Or type the word checklist into the, into the, no, that won't work on YouTube. You'll have to email me, info at the video spot dot. Now just email me if you want to get that stuff. Um, and Heather Carr is saying American military news. Yeah, Heather, send that to me, send that to me as well on our email. I would love to see that because I'm going on the news tonight to talk about it. Okay. So I love to turn it over to you guys to ask, answer any questions you might have about how to, um, uh, build a great webinar. Cloud Christian is saying, thanks for the link. I have the stream deck, but I don't know how to use it with Restream. Maybe I need vMix too. Yeah, um, you would need vMix. Are you a Mac user or a PC? Uh, if you're on PC, you're going to want to use vMix. If you're on a Mac, you're going to use Ecamm. But that's where you want to use it. You use it inside of Ecamm, and then you can work it with your Restream. So I might do a, a bigger training on that. I might even do a webinar on that. Uh, if you guys want to learn some of that stuff, it's it's hard to tell. My my YouTube channel is so full of like creators, some business people. It's hard to get real feedback on like what you guys want to learn. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. What do you want to learn? Do you want to learn stuff like how to be a better live streamer? Do you want to learn more about restream, you know, functionality? Do you want to learn more about business, uh, internet marketing functionality? Do you want to learn more about YouTube specifically, Facebook? specifically uh what kind of hub for your monitors i don't know what that means um my monitors both plug into my computer directly and my computer was built for up to four monitors i think maybe even five um so i i custom built the computer not a big custom builder guy but i don't need a hub for my monitors okay all right guys great to be with you today and i can't wait to be with you again next week if you enjoyed the content today, please consider sharing it with someone or liking it down below. Just click the thumbs up button. It helps us get on point and get more into the news feeds. Brendan Sparks saying he wants to learn more about webinars. Stay with us. More of that coming up. I'm Owen Video. We will see you guys on the next video. Rockstar Rochelle saying you look great. I feel great. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys on next week's call.